be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here. Welcome back to Rabbit Trails. For those of you that are visiting this program for the first time, um, let me tell you a little bit about the program and what our focus is. Our goal in this program is to chase down the truth. You know, in our industry, there are a lot of opinions, there's a lot of assumptions, and there's just a little bit of science. And so here on this program, we want to chase down the truth so that you, the salon professional, can have the accurate information to help you make the choices that you need to make. So that's the purpose of our program here today. You can see that we are in the forest and uh, we have our hunting hats on. And I have my special guest, Max Mazzano, here with me. Again, I asked Max to come back and do another episode with me. This is episode two, for those of you that are keeping track. So, Max, good morning. How are you? I'm all right, Dennis. Good morning to you. Happy <laughs> to be here. Yeah, it's wonderful to see that the weather in Boston is the same as the weather here in California. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's uh, crazy, crazy. What a crazy holiday this has been, huh? I Isn't mean, that the truth? You know, all the craziness that's happening in our world, uh, all the craziness that's happening to salon professionals across the country, you know, all of that. Now we have snowstorms in the Northeast. <laughs> They're just pounding the people. Um, it's just a crazy world. Uh, we never could have written this in a script for a movie. If you would have taken this to a producer 10 years ago and said, hey, I have an idea for a movie, they would have laughed you out of their office. So kind of crazy, yeah, but. It was called The Day After Tomorrow. Do you remember that movie? <laughs> I do. Wasn't that with John Cusack? Was it with no, John No, it was, uh, oh gosh, I don't or know. Jason Bateman, like... Or Jason Bateman or somebody. Yeah, The Day After Tomorrow. You know what? I'm going to have to search that out uh, this evening and maybe watch that again. <laughs> Snowstorms, tsunamis. It's like, can it, oh, you know, yeah. get crazy, any crazier? Crazy, crazy world. Yeah. But you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, you know, you keep your head up. You keep moving forward. That's the most important thing. Uh, God knows that uh, in our industry, a lot of people are, are, are having some challenges. So uh, our goal here on this program is to provide them, first of all, with a little bit of levity, uh, get them to relax and kind of enjoy some things and uh, talk a little bit about facts. You know, here's the thing about the truth. The truth is, you know, you've heard that, that saying, the truth will set you free. It's mm -hmm. also sometimes painful because when we contradict our belief systems, when our belief systems are contradicted, we get really offended. Mm -hmm. We may not say it, but we, we have that little voice in our head that goes off that says, wait a minute, that's not the way I learned hair color. Wait a minute, that's not what my teacher taught me. And so it creates a lot of frustration with us. I think a lot of that's because we didn't get all the pieces we needed in beauty school. Would you agree? Oh, 100%. And, you know, when, when you are mentored by someone that you really trust, sometimes you just tend to take what they say as truth. And sometimes it, I feel like it's even harder when you actually take a new concept put it to test and discover that something that maybe you believed wasn't actually how it yeah. really was. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's humbling, but also empowering. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm happy that <clears throat> we can do this for our industry, especially in this time, you know, right. You know, people, people are looking for connection. They're looking for education and um, you know, here we are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'll never forget, you know, my mentor, um, after working with him for three years and working right by his side, I decided to re-enroll in school and went back to school, went back to college. <laughs> and uh, even with all the information he shared with me and all the knowledge he gave me, and even after all the information that I learned in college and was able to achieve a degree in chemistry, when I went to work at Redken, uh, and I worked in the laboratories and product development along as, as long as, as well as working in education, I was still taken back by what the chemists knew that I didn't know. Yeah. And, it's you amazing. know, they were so funny. They would just look at me and they'd go, <laughs> oh boy, sit down here, 
young man. And let me tell you, and it, it was just really a huge learning um, environment for me. And it really made me seek the truth. And, uh, you know, that's what we always say uh, in our company, Guru Nation. We always say, don't believe anything we tell you. Test it out. Test yeah. it out. Because uh, I think for our industry today, there's more and more confusion now than there was maybe years ago. And I think that's because there's a lot of experts <laughs> on social media. <laughs> and, and what happens is I, I find that when people go to an event and they learn, you know, experts say that every, every 18 seconds of every minute, we take a mental vacation when we're in a class. So what happens is sometimes they take a mental vacation for 18 seconds. They miss valuable information, that bridge between what they heard before they went on their mental vacation and what they heard when they got back. And rather than asking the facilitator or the educator, can you fill in that blank for me? They fill it in on their own. And that's how we end up with all these strange stories. And it's no wonder young people getting into this business, especially in hair color, are totally confused, you yeah. know? Yeah, so, 100%. Crazy. But anyway, let's move into our, uh, our segment here this morning. Um, you know, we discussed a couple of different segments we wanted to talk about. I think the first one I think is mo really important to talk about. And I hear lots of people still questioning it. And we should know this. If you're doing color, this is an important piece to understand. And it's all about... The processing cycle. You know, Max, I hear lots of people teach processing cycle this way. They say, okay, so the first 15 minutes is lift and the second 15 minutes is deposit. And so it's like the hair color has a brain. So that makes people say, well, then I'll just put the color on for the first 15 minutes and that way I won't get any deposit. I'll just get lift. And it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Because the reality is not that, is it? No. And I think that um, one, of, one of the first things that people need to realize is that when you mix your uh, color with developer in the bowl, immediately it's, you know, these, this chemical reaction is occurring and, and these chemicals are starting to party. Right. So like, for instance, if you're doing a full head of highlights and lowlights, but you mix up your lowlight formula and you put in 30 highlight foils before you put in your lowlight formula, it's already oxidizing. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, the second these chemicals are mixed together, they're doing something. Right. So, you know, Again, like you said, in, in classes that I taught uh, this past week, I, I heard this sort of misnomer on the processing cycle. Well, that's just the lifting cycle. And then the end is the depositing cycle. And I said, well, what about for demi-permanent hair color? <laughs> so what's happening? So, uh, you know, I think that the sort of like the first thing that we have to start thinking with is lift and deposit are happening simultaneously, but at the beginning of the process, at the middle of the process, and at the end of the process, some things are happening more and some things are happening less. Right, right. So uh, let me cue up my notes from the big board. <laughs> so in the first five minutes of mixing your your hair color is what is called peak oxidation. And that is where you're getting this immediate burst of oxygen, mm -hmm. which is what in the case of permanent hair color is going to start to fracture the pigment and lighten the natural hair. But right. also too, it's starting to make all of these colorless dye intermediates and couplers start to attract to one another and begin to kind of develop. 
And, you know, for, for those of you guys out there listening, I mean, when you think about it, you usually mix up your color in the case of most cream hair colors kind of starts out as like a white or a beige. And then a right. few minutes into the processing, you can see it in the bowl. It's starting to deepen slightly. Right. So, so some dye development is happening right there and right. it is happening in the bowl. And that's just the, the way it is. Cause I've also heard in classes and actually from other educators back when I was like a baby in the industry that it doesn't really start happening until you put it on the hair. You know, it's only <laughs> the top, it's only the top layer of the, the mixture in the mold that's oxidizing. And if you scoop off the top, you can see that it's white underneath. And like we said, hair color doesn't have a brain. No. It doesn't just know. <laughs> that's like also saying like covers, covers up to 75% white hair. How does that hair color know which hairs to, <laughs> to cover Amen. or not? It doesn't. Right. You know what, what you said about the pr protective layer, it's darker. And if you scoop it off underneath it, um, you know, if you scoop it off underneath, what you'll do is you'll see a white cream. And what I find really funny about that is like, it reminds me of an old Viking show, Viking movie where the guys put their shields up. Okay, we're oxidized. Everybody else is protected down here below. That's nonsense. No. You know, it's like those darkened oxidative dyes, those are partially developed dye molecules. Yeah. They're never going to get in the head, in the hair anyway. Exactly. You know, that's, they're not, it's not going to happen. So even if you stir them up and you mix them all together, they're already partially developed. You don't change their structure. Okay, it's all part of it. So, you know, that that's a whole thing, I think, sometimes in processing. Uh, I always say it's chaos in processing. Mm -hmm. I say it's sort of like the teacup ride at Disneyland. If you've yeah. ever been to Disneyland or Disney World, I think they have teacups there. And you, you start riding on the teacup ride, you'll notice that each cup is spinning slowly. And the whole, the whole, the whole floor is spinning. And then as the speed picks up, you find yourself, you know, you're kind of losing your balance because you got to hold on because it gets more erratic and more erratic. And sometimes it gets so close, you think those teacups are going to crash into each other. So it goes from the teacup ride to the bumper car ride. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening in a color process. It's not organized or synchronized, although we teach it that way. Yeah. It's all happening chaotically and and we don't even talk about the fact that some of the dye intermediates that's that's what they are before they become a color molecule some of those intermediate dyes are getting destroyed in that process because peroxide has no brain at all right it just goes crazy the the more, the more alkalinity there is in the environment, the crazier peroxide gets. It is like exactly. basic instinct, okay? You put it in an, in an area where there's a lot of alkalinity, peroxide gets nuts. It goes crazy. It starts breaking and fracturing and doing all the things it does in the process. But it does all of that. I think probably it's more like a tornado that's actually happening in the bowl. That's it's, delivering the color into the hair. It just happens to do that. You know what like I mean? Organized chaos in a way, because there are so many simultaneous moving parts and pieces, right? Right. The cuticles swelling open, right. number one. Then, you know, oxygen is permeating the entire hair shaft and fracturing pigment. Right. Colorants, you know, colorless colorants or, you know, dye intermediates and couplers are making their way into the cortex. Right. Then the hair is starting to lighten in the case of permanent hair color, you know, and then the, the, the colorants are starting to couple. And, you know, also what they do is they actually start to inflate as they develop mm -hmm. so that they get so large that they're trapped in the hair. And all of this is going on in that processing window. Exactly. Exactly. So, so the second you mix your product, this starts going on and then you start to apply it to the hair. Right. You know, right. you can't put them in the bowl side by side. And um, 
you know, say, okay, uh, my peroxide's here, my color's here, they're not going to mix, they're going to touch, but they're not going to mix. And right. So we'll be okay. Or you can't put a piece of foil over your bowl and save it. You can't trap the oxidation. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like trying to fix a water leak, right? That's yeah. what's happening. You know, if you think you're going to put foil overneath your, uh, over your bowl and trap the oxidation, you're not. The oxygen yeah. is going to continue to release because it's in the peroxide. That's where it's coming from. It's not coming from outside. Shit. Sure, sure. <laughs> and then I've had people say, well, you know, like, you know, I've used the same bowl of low light for um, the entire full head. And, you know, I've let it, you know, it took me an hour to apply and I still see low lights. And I'm like, well, if the hair is, has holes poked into it, you know, you're low lighting it because it's previously lightened. Well, yeah, you will get some staining. That's it. How, That's exactly however, it. Yes. You know, it is, in my opinion, uh, a much more effective way to approach this would just be to mix small batches at a time. I agree. You know? Because I agree. You'll, you'll just get more durability. Absolutely. You know? and, and for anyone who ever wants to try it, you know, get, get some of those, you know, like pivot point swatches, bleach them out you know, mix up a small amount of like a low light shade, put it on immediately, let that bowl process for 30, 30 or so minutes, apply it to another bleached out piece, and then shampoo them repeatedly. Right. And you know, you'll, you'll probably have a eye opening experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think another thing that people need to understand as well is that you're going to lose pigment. So whatever color you're using, the amount of pigment that's in that color, you're going to lose it based upon the volume of developer that you mix with the color. Sure. So like a moderate volume of developer will distort or degrade some of the dyes. The higher the volume of developer, the more distortion and degrading that you get. And so right. that's why, that's where that rule comes from. We all been to color class and they taught us that, right? They say the further away you are, the less control you have over warmth. And the reason that they say that is because um, if I'm using a lighter shade, which has less pigment in it anyway, right. and I'm lightening the hair, by the time I get to my target, I'm not going to have as much pigment as I did initially in my color. And so we have to know that's happening. And it also applies to toning. <laughs> For Absolutely. those people that that tone for five seconds and then takes it off the head. <laughs> I love Especially that. Especially using like, like another sort of like industry wide thing is the, is the, the shadow root with a certain brand of mm. demi permanent liquid color at a level five. Yeah. You know, on a, on a blonde mm -hmm. and they're like, well, you get a beautiful result. Well, again, you know, you, you are only toning for a few minutes, but you are taking this, this set of level five dyes and only partially developing them. So you're getting toning at, you know, like maybe whatever level your, you know, right. underlying warmth is at, which is fine. I know it looks great, but what people don't actually realize is the durability at the end. Yes. If you, it, it's sort of like if you only have, would you go into a building that was partially built <laughs> or where, or where the, you had a partial floor? Right. Well, no, cause you'd fall through it into the basement. You know, it's kind of the same thing. And I, and I think that comes back to just really knowing your, you know, sort of under underlying pigments. Right. And, and how to formulate accordingly. And then, you know, using your product and timing it accordingly so that you get, you know, not only the full dye development, but also like the conditioning properties that, you know, are also added into, you know, most demi-permanent colors, because a lot of times they actually improve the condition of the hair, especially after you've, you know, right. turned it into Swiss cheese with lightener. That's right. <laughs> yes, I think that just the processing cycle alone 
could make a difference if we actually understood how it works and we used it to our benefit. Right. See, I think the reason that, that people don't use that, and I mean, you can use the process, processing cycle if you want. I mean, I just made a set of rapid toners for a company and people would reach out to me and they would say, well, what's the technology in a rapid toner? Is it different than permanent color? And I go, no, rapid toners are permanent color. They're just set at a specific amount of saturation. So, and they're based most of the time on the fact that most hairdressers under process their toners. That's the reason rapid toners came into being. And so, so understanding that allows you to then, you can manipulate your formulation if you understand the processing cycle and what you're working with. I mean, if you understand that you get dye development throughout the process, but you don't get the, the at the end of the process, you're probably receiving more dye development than you are at the beginning of the process. So what would happen if in the middle, I added another color into the mixture? Could I do that? I could, couldn't I? I mean, I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying I could. If we talk about principles and not rules, sure. I could add another color into the mix halfway through and I could literally change that color. And I could make it a different color for the finish of the development time. Okay. On that note, do you mind if I share a quick story about Absolutely, what please. I had? Yeah. All right. So when I was in hair school, I did one of my really good friend's hair and she pretty much had, she had a new growth and she had bleached hair on the mids and ends. And mm -hmm. I took a, a permanent hair color that also had direct dyes in it. Ah. Uh, and I applied it from root to end because that was all I knew. Right. Right. And it started to develop. The roots looked great, but the mids and ends were literally fuchsia and my my I, I go to get the instructor because like you know i'm having a depends moment right and and i'm like i love that a depends her. moment <laughs> not the first one i've ever had either yeah. um i was like i was like her hair is pink and and my instructor goes well you didn't fill it did you and i went no she goes all right well just mix this up and put it over top of it and I was like, you can do that. She was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. She's like, we're just doing it in reverse. You put your target color on first. So <laughs> we're just going to yeah. add the filler right over top of it. You know? Right. right. Because it's, you know, it's like these combinations of dyes are all just going to live in the hair that are right. going to give you the end result. Yes. But it was such a great learn, you know, yeah. that, you know, it's like, it's not always that uh, you are just stuck you know right did like, you feel did you feel empowered after that 100 percent. you said know? man bring it on somebody screw up somebody's hair and bring it to me i know how to fix it <laughs> exactly you know? so anyway hey is there a dog in the woods yes <laughs> my, little, my little hunter my hunting pal that's great that's great all right so look final thoughts about this subject i mean uh what would you suggest if you were going to give us salon professionals uh, something to think about what would be your most important things for them to consider when they're considering processing cycle? I would say the, one of the biggest datums to kind of keep in mind would be, especially when you're dealing with permanent hair color, the more lift a formula has, the less deposit you're going to have in the end. So keep that in mind when you're working with higher levels of developer um, and right. just kind of know that. And also know that, you know, the higher, the higher the developer you put into a formula, the more that it is going to act as a corrosive to the dyes in the formula. So you're not gonna get a lot at the end. And that's okay, as long as you know what you're getting. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, 
what I have found, the, uh, the other thing that I would say is that I have found is, you know, especially like when you're lightening the hair or covering gray, always respect the manufacturer's recommended development time, which yeah. is typically, you know, anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes. Right. Because right. you will always get the maximum dye development. And when you're dealing with things like gray coverage, lightening and controlling warmth, and even in the case of demi-permanent hair color, like where you're toning and you're really trying to get rid of some kind of unwanted tone, you know, formulate correctly and time appropriately. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right, Max. Uh, understanding this piece alone would make a huge difference in a lot of results. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully you guys found this beneficial. And uh, look, we're going to take a little break. Stay tuned. We'll see you back here in a little bit. So have a great break time. See you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. All right, welcome back. What a great riff. You guys want to play that one more time? Yeah, I love that. I love it. All right, so welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good little break. And welcome back, Dennis, to segment number two. We did Thanks. some, we had some pretty thought provoking uh, things in the first segment, wouldn't you say? I would say we did. I would say, you know what? I always say my job as an educator, a trainer, is to provoke your thought process. So if exactly. I didn't provoke, provoke your thought process, I was not doing my job. <laughs> 100%. Absolutely. So, so on that same vein, Dennis, you know, so we, we've talked about the uh, processing cycle and, you know, what happens when you put color on the hair. But at the end of it, you know, another, another thing that I, I sometimes hear in my, my classes is, you know, I use this shampoo to bring the hair down to its optimal pH, or I use this product and it has a peroxide scavenger in it, or this or that. And although I am a proponent of all of these products, I think, I think it would be pretty apropos to kind of talk about what the state the hair really is in, you know, prior to rinsing and, and how you can actually bring the oxidation down and that it's not just a one and done type process. Great, great, absolutely. Well, um, let me see here. Oh. Whoopsie. There I am. <laughs> all right, let's talk about that. First of all, in order to, to understand it, kind of have to talk about pH. You know, I find myself talking about pH more nowadays than I have in a lot of years because <laughs> I thought everybody understood what pH was all about. So here's the thing to, to, I think will help you. Number one is to understand that hair has no, has no pH. Well, most people go, oh, my God, don't tell me that. I was in school. They told me hair's, hair's pH was 4.5 to 5.5. That's not what they told you. Oh, yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Okay. If they were teaching you properly, what they told you is the optimum pH for hair is 4.5 to 5.5. The pH is, that optimum pH is where hair, the cuticle is compact. You can get a comb through it without breaking off cuticle layers. And hair, hair's happy in a 4.5 to 5.5 pH. But hair is like tofu. 
Now, for those of you that have ever eaten tofu, you know that tofu really does not have a flavor. Uh, but if you, whatever you cook it with, it takes on that flavor. Hair is the very, very same way. So if I put hair in an alkaline exposed situation, hair color, for example, hair will take on that pH. So at the end of most color processes, the pH of hair is somewhere between 9.5 and 10. I'm not talking about bleach. I'm talking about just hair color in general. So the hair is really swollen. It's not in its optimum pH, optimum environment. And so we immediately think, well, if I just shampoo it once, there's a lot of people who shampoo once, put a conditioner on, and let the client go. It's important to understand that alkaline, or in the laboratory, what we call base, is always stronger than acid, which means that by just doing one acid treatment on the hair, it does not mean that the hair will come back to its normal pH. It takes a succession of applications to lower the pH of the hair. It is a gradual process. So in post-oxidation, the reason a lot of times you get premature fading of the hair is because you didn't post-oxidize it properly. The reason you will get color that, what we call color transfer, where color bleeds out of the hair when the client gets in the shower at home and she sees her color run down the drain is because of improper post-oxidation. So what I wanna share with you is the steps that I go through. Now, first thing you're all gonna tell me is, I don't have time to do that because we're always in a hurry. The problem is, if I don't do that, I'm gonna have problems down the line. So you choose where you wanna have your challenge. I don't know about you, but when my client leaves the salon, I want to make sure that I don't have a challenge coming back to me in 10 days or in 14 days. So here's the steps that we go through. First thing we do is we rinse the hair with water at the shampoo bowl until the color runs clear. Now, that's an important part that many people in our industry skip. They don't rinse because if, if, that, if that client has a high density of hair or long hair, you're not going to rinse that hair in two minutes. It's going to take somewhere between three and five minutes before you get the product out of the hair. So now by rinsing it with water, hopefully it's a pH that's at least close to seven. And if you don't know what the pH of the water is in your salon, I recommend that you test it. The reason is because there's lots of people who have chemical reactions from some of the colors that they use and they don't know why. And when you track it down, you find that it's because their water has a higher pH than seven. In some areas of the country, the pH is eight, 8.5. Well, that's the color of a demi-permanent color. It's alkaline. Right. Okay, remember the pH scale is logarithmic. So if water is at seven, and the pH of my water is eight, that's 10 times stronger. That's not gonna constrict the cuticle. That's gonna allow the cuticle to remain open. Plus that tells me there's probably minerals and things like that in that water that I may not wanna have. So <clears throat> you're gonna rinse till the, the color runs clear. Second thing that we're going to do after that is we're gonna use an acidifying spray. Now, many manufacturers make acidifying sprays. So, uh, you know, we're not here to endorse any one brand, but there are several brands who have acidifying sprays. How do you know? Well, look at it. Number one, it should have a pH of around three to four, 3.5 to 4.5 in that range. And I'm going to put that acidifying spray into that hair and work it through that hair before I shampoo. Here's what's going to happen. That acidifying spray is going to slow down any residual oxidation that I may have missed during my rinsing step. So it helps to ensure that we're bringing the hair back to its natural pH. It helps to ensure that we're getting any residual dyes out of that hair. Because remember that when that client goes home and she showers and she has transfer, 
What those are are partially developed color dyes <clears throat> that did not get all the way into the cortex. Uh, in the first part of this program, Max and I talked about that, that you have partially developed dyes that will develop in the cuticle, in the cuticle layers. So you're going to spray it with acidifying spray. You're going to work it through the hair for a couple of minutes. Then you're going to use your shampoo. I recommend a shampoo at a low pH, somewhere around four. Okay, that lower pH is going to help to bring it down. Remember, if I rinse it with water and it was setting at 9.5, I'm probably going to bring it down somewhere closer to 8. If I spray the acidifying spray, I'm going to probably bring it down somewhere closer to 7. Then I shampoo it with a pH of 4 shampoo. I'm going to bring it down a little bit closer, maybe 6.5. Now I'm going to shampoo a second time. Right. With that four again, <clears throat> bring it down a little bit lower. And then when I rinse that out, I'm going to put an acidifying conditioner. Low pH conditioner, you want to add some flexibility, some moisture into that hair. You're going to use that for a couple of minutes. You're going to rinse that out of the hair. And then I top it all off with spraying and <laughs> an acidifying rinse one more time to make sure that I've got it as close to a 4.5 to 5.5 pH as possible, because then I know the hair is going to be shiny. The hair is going to look beautiful. I'm not going to have any residual color that bleeds out of the hair. And it's going to make sure that I have more longevity in my color service. Early fading is caused by several things. One of those things is not, not a good post-oxidation step. So post-oxidation is as important as anything else in the color process to bringing that hair back into shape. Now, don't believe me, do this test. Take your hair color. Um, you have to mix it in water because pH is only tested in a water-based solution. So take your hair color, mix it with water, test the pH. You're going to find the pH is around, most of them, somewhere between 9 and 10. Okay, so even water at a pH of 7, because you put it right into the alkaline mixture, water <laughs> took on the pH of the alkaline mixture that you mixed it with. So oh, that tells you how strong the alkaline mixture is. Now, take and mix peroxide with that color. Take and mix equal parts of 20 volume peroxide with your color, okay? You make it into a, into a liquid, or add, add it into a water base if you wish, and then test it, and you're gonna find that it's still alkaline, that the acid does not bring it anywhere in between it does not bring it to the acid side of the pH scale. In order to do that, we have to do step after step after step after step. And so that to me is the proper way to post oxidize a color treated head of hair. In bleach, it's the same way. Uh, I can't tell you, Max, how many times I have seen salon professionals uh, inadequately shampoo a head of bleached hair. And there's still bleach in the hair fiber because they were in a hurry. Right. Okay. And let me tell you, bleach, you know, if you don't get it out of the hair, it will continue to work. Right. To some degree. And you can, and remember, it is a decomposing product. Look up decomposition. <laughs> Tell what it says. In, in other words, you're dissolving the hair. So exactly. I recommend that acidification is very, very important if we want to have healthy hair, if we want to have hair that they can maintain, if we want to have hair that has longevity. Our hair colors have longevity and last over that period of 30 days. And that's how long a successful hair color should last at least. 30 days. Now, I'm not talking about, uh, I never tell my client that it will last six weeks or eight weeks. That's craziness. Because we know that because people shampoo on a daily basis today, some people shampoo two and three times a day. 
that over a period of 30 days, even on an average hair color, even at a level five light brown, they're going to have from a half a level, about a half a level of fading because they have the breakdown of those couplers. And as those couplers break down, you start seeing lighter shades of hair. So I tell my clients 30 days, you have to, you come back. Now, uh, if it's a bright shade, like intense, like a red shade or uh, something like that, uh, they will fade almost a full level. So you have to be aware of that. And, and the texture of hair is going to determine that. If I am doing fine hair and I'm doing it red, it's going to fade quicker than if I'm doing medium or coarser textures of hair, which are going to hold on to the dye intermediates longer because they have a bigger cortex and so they're going to have more longevity, more longevity in your color. So those are things that we need to understand. Post-oxidation is so essential. And the client has to maintain that at home. Not that they have to, to do five steps, but it means that they need to maintain it with some sort of an acidifying rinse to constrict their cuticle. <clears throat> they need to maintain it with the proper support shampoo and support conditioner. If they do that, then colors last beautifully a long time. Colors have great longevity. The hair has great shine, looks healthy, healthy and beautiful. So that's my spin on uh, post-oxidation. Max, uh, anything you want to add to that? I mean, excuse me. I think you covered it brilliantly. And I mean, what else is there to say, you know? <laughs> well, here's the thing, you know, people have, we have a world of options. And in this industry, you have a lot of options. You, you can either choose to do it or choose not to do it. Now, there's people who choose not to do that. And that's, that's fine. That's their, that's their life. And if your clients, I always say this, if your clients like what you do, and if they're coming back to you, really what I have to say is not going to have maybe a lot of impact on you. Sure. However, if your clients have problems and you see those problems and you admit that there are problems, <laughs> then you might want to, you know, maybe think about the things that we shared today. Um, I've been doing color for a little while and I've learned a lot. And our goal is to help those who are still learning about color and those who still feel um, feel um, that they don't know everything yet and they feel a little apprehensive about doing color, then hopefully this information will empower them. And uh, I think there's lots of good stuff in here. It's up to you. If you guys have uh, listened to us today and you've learned something, that's cool. Um, share it with your friends, would you do that? Here on YouTube, you can subscribe to this channel uh, down here below. You can also follow us on Instagram. Max is Max M Hair at Max M Hair. Uh, you can find me at Real Captain Color. Uh, we invite you to visit our website, which is um, www.gurunation.net. Um, we offer lots of educational programs. Uh, we have webinars you can download and view. And um, we offer live, live classes once COVID is over and we're able to do that. But most importantly, we are focused on helping you discover your genius. And that's why I love to have guests like Max, who is a, a very well accomplished colorist, a great educator, a great facilitator, and a good friend who um, we share like-minded thoughts about the way our color works. And I think uh, you'll find what he has to share with you very beneficial as well. So uh, Max, any final things for everybody? I mean, I think we've covered it, but again, just to reiterate what you said, we're not here to reinvent the wheel. You know, if something's working for you, great. You don't have to change it. But all we're trying to do is empower you with information so that you can make intelligent choices with whatever you're doing. And, you know, if you gained one thing out of today, then we've accomplished what we set out to do. And we really appreciate everyone's viewership. 
Absolutely. Listen, thank you, everybody. We are Rabbit Trails. We are chasing down the truth for you. And we'll see you again next time. Everybody, take care. See you soon. From my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. Max, how about you? Bye, guys. See you all. Bye-bye.